So there is a botnet scanning the internet for insecure exposed .env files. And uh, if, you're, if you're a back-end engineer or front-end engineer for that matter, you know how dangerous this is. How about we jump into it? So guys, uh, if you ever build a back-end application and you had to communicate to a database or you had to communicate with a key store, or you had to create a, a JWT token or a refresh token or an access token or had to store some sort of credential. We always say, hey, don't hard code the credential in the code. That's a bad idea because if you push the code, then the credential will be in the code and, and everyone can see the code and see your, your password and, and your API keys. That's a bad idea. So what do we do? We use environment variables, so at runtime, you pass the application, whoever starts the application, pass in environment variables with those uh, variables. So you can pass the password as an environment variable, you can pass the API key as an environment variable, so you don't have to push the code with the actual key or the password, you just pass in the code that says, hey, I'm, I won't pull the environment available, says user password, and nobody sees what it is. So at runtime, you specify that. So you can do that either by actually doing uh, the application with a Node.js or uh, any command line app, Docker, and then you specify the environment variable, or you set it in the command line with our Windows or, or Linux. And then you run your app and then your app will just magically discover your environment variables. We, we have done this for, 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 for years now. There is an easier, more convenient way to set a cup, a, a lot of environment variable in your code so that you don't have to actually run multiple commands before running your executable, right? To set the environment variable. And that's the env file. And the env file is very popular. You can create dot env file literally say hey i want to set the password is equal this this equal this this is equal this and, and that's it and when you run your node.js application some frameworks looks for this dot dot in file and then load it into your environment variable so it, it does the work for you this dot in file however we have for the longest time there was always best practices that hey make sure do not push this dot in file to your code base, right? Otherwise, everyone can see your passwords and API keys. That just kills the purpose. So as a best practice, I think by default, the dot get ignore actually ignores dot m file unless you specifically ask it not to. So that's from the GitHub perspective. However, to automate stuff, how still you still need to locate this in file somehow in your back end and you stop building your app. How do you do that, right? So you store your dot in file somewhere else and you copy it and then you do your stuff, your scripts, right? And that's not so bad if the dot in file is in a secure location in your backend so that only your app has access. I don't think that's a bad idea. However, it's a problem if it's located on a file share that is publicly accessible. And I think that's what's happening here. So this botnet, is scanning the whole internet for anything that has .env file. Because it's known, .env contains beautiful, secure stuff. So that's what that, this does. It just scans the web. Look at it. It found a lot of goodies. It found a lot of goodies. Look at this stuff. Oh my God. That's just scary. I, I my, my heart is skipping a beat looking at this stuff. Because I did my share of mistakes. I didn't push a .env file, but I did... To me, it's, I did something worse. I actually hard-coded a password in my code. And then I pushed that thing to the public. And I find out yelling. I got yelled at by, by someone up or there. So just immediately they found out they scanned the code. And <laughs> so, so that's bad. That was years ago. But yeah, everybody makes mistakes, obviously. But look at this, guys. Look at this. Look at this. So this is from Twitter. This is from Twitter. Oh, man. Oh my God, it's just, it's just so scary, right? That these botnets and these apps are doing all sorts of what, what is going on, right? It's just like, it's so 
scary. They know everything, right? They find out how can they squeeze any potential information about you, right? And then do that, right? So just this is just a this is just some piece of the news, guys. So if if you have if you accidentally push the don't end, make sure you're not. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people know not to do that, obviously. But just in case, this is this one is really scary, right? But not a big deal. Let, let's 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 play the devil's advocate. So if you architected your backend so that it's behind proper proxies and firewalls, you will have to protect your MySQL database or Postgres database or whatever database that you you expose so that it's only accessible from within a subnet of IPs that you actually understand. And that's probably your application. So technically, again, devil's advocate, if that password was exposed, nobody can actually connect to the database, even if they know the address of the database. Because you hopefully have done the job and configured your MySQL, Postgres, whatever database, AWS. So it only allow connection from these specific set of IP addresses. And that's probably your, your backend app. So I would, of course, worry about that from, let's say, uh, refresh token and access tokens. That's a little bit dangerous, right? Is it refresh tokens? Is that how you generate JWT? I forgot. I created a video about JWT. Check it out. But you have to create a key. You have to create a private public key or, or just even symmetric key, right? And that key, that's that's dangerous if it's leaked because anyone who got the key can essentially uh, uh, can can recreate your own JWT with with admin credentials, and that's bad. But certain things like this stateless thingy with the with with JWT, that's dangerous if it got leaked. Database. If you don't know what you're doing with the backend, eh, I would just change the password, but they can't connect to it if you block those sort of stuff. But that was just me. All right, guys, uh, what do you think about this? This is a little bit scary, huh? I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.